right guys, so I'm back today with a really cool historic firearm, the Sauron Sun Model 1913. When I take a look at a handgun like this, it falls into three categories for me anyways. A purely historic collectible piece, a collectible piece that's also functional, or a surplus handgun that has modern day uses still to this day because it was designed so well and it functions great. This particular handgun falls into the second category for me, something that is a functional shooter to go out and have fun with down at the range, yet steeped in history and tradition with a really cool story, even being used some in World War I. Before we get too far into the video, I want to give a huge shout out to Beltway Gun & Pod located in Matthews, North Carolina for helping make this video possible. These guys supply a monthly stipend to acquire one firearm from their a store to allow me to make a video on and they give me a discount on that farm and this is the one I selected for March. You can see it's in reasonably good shape but not pristine condition so I don't mind taking it to the range and shooting it and that's what I did and I'm really surprised at the ease of use of this handgun. It's got some very nice features which we'll talk about as well as just a touch of the history about the Sauron Sun Model 1913. The handgun itself started with the first generation and it had some interesting design features. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those to show you, but it actually had a magazine disconnect safety that once you inserted the mag again, you actually had to press a button. The sight itself was in the rear neural knob and the later generations moved the sight outside here and it also doubles as a locking tab to rotate this and unscrew for disassembly. That's a really nice feature and that toolless disassembly really brings it to the modern era even though we're talking about the Model 1913. The safety is located on the side and is very easy to use and overall it's very ergonomic and easy to hold on. Now some different variations between the, the Generation 2 and the Generation 3 are a little bit more subtle but this is the Generation 3 uh, definitely dated by its serial number located right here. Now, if you're looking at the Generation 2, that's most of the time what ended up used in World War, uh, World War I. Now, that's not necessarily a service pistol, but officers were allowed to buy a pistol, and this was one of the ones that was on the approved list that they could buy, and then it would become, I guess, in the inventory of World War I. So these were used selectively in the service by German officers, so that is pretty cool, especially if you can grab one of the generation or version two versions of this gun with those proof marks. You can see this one actually has the proof marks located on the side right there. And then it also has some proof marks located at the top. Such a cool piece of history. Now, functionally, this one also has some unique features that I wanna talk about. When you take it to the range, you actually depress the mag release forward, it kicks it out slightly, and you can take out the seven round magazine, again, chambered in 32 ACP, caliber 7.65. Now, when you insert the mag, it locks in and there's no magazine disconnect or anything to worry about on this variation three. At this point, you can either have it on safe or fire. You'll chamber around by grabbing this oversized knurled knob. You'll drop that round and it's ready to go. Then you can flip it off safe and take your shots. The trigger is actually pretty decent for a small little pocket pistol. The reset's pretty decent as well. And this also has an interesting feature right here. When you're picking up these pistols, you'll see this little tab. It'll kind of fall down and flip up. You can actually press up this tab and then it manually locks back the slide and that's the only slide lock that it has on the pistol. It doesn't hold open after the last round, but you can manually open that up. That's pretty interesting. And then to put it home, you can actually just grab it and let it go. The sights themselves are pretty rudimentary, but once you get used to them, they're pretty easy to use. It is a rather interesting sight picture though with this very large cocking knob on the rear of the handgun. The other interesting thing about this is when you rotate these flathead screws, it's actually attached to a lever on the back that unlocks the grips to remove them. Overall, the recoil is very controllable since it is a pretty heavy pistol. It seems like it's a tack driver down at the range. It's a very functional and reliable pistol. I had no issues out of it whatsoever. Overall, this is a pretty cool gun to take down to the range, have fun with, 
yet get a collectible piece of history that could have potentially been used in World War I. I love handguns like this, and I hope you guys like them too. If you have any more information you guys like to share about the Sauer & Sons Model 1913, please leave in the comment section below. Also, let me know what other historic farms you might want to see. Beltway Gun and Pond is a great place to grab those. They're always getting in new and used uh, different types of farms, but definitely they've got a cool selection up at the front right corner of their shop of military surplus weapons, and this was in there, so I had to grab it. Also, if you tell them 704 Tactical sent you over, Beltway Gun and Pond will give you 10% off a of purchase in their shop. They also have a ton of ammo in stock, so if you happen to swing by in Matthews, North Carolina, Check those guys out. Tell them 704 Tactical sent you over. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.